Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I'm going to try to make this video a quick video today. Uh, I was asked a while ago, oh, it's been a couple months now and I'm just getting around to remembering to make this video, about the differences between sh short and long tooling. I'm going to be explaining why I prefer short tooling over long tooling. And this is mainly for anything that I've got, like a cutting edge or a punch or pretty much anything along those lines, why I like short tooling, short lengthwise tooling, than I do long tooling. And the main reason why is deflection. So, over the distance of a long piece of tooling, you're going to get a certain amount of deflection. This isn't always the case, and I'll compare a couple pieces here real quick for you, uh, but why I say this isn't always the case. But usually there is a certain discernible amount of deflection across a long surface whenever you're hammering upon the tool. Making sure I'm still in shot here. So the shorter the tool is, the harder it is for that tool to deflect. And so therefore, less energy gets wasted in trying to deflect the tool than it is to take and actually get the work done. So that's one reason or benefit that I like using short tooling. The second benefit is you don't have all this mass to overcome. I see a lot of different tooling that gets designed and things that are very big and heavy and chunky, mainly flatters and set hammers, and they're very big. It's almost like striking a sledgehammer and trying to get work done underneath it. And there's such a great mass there that you've really got to whale it to take and get any sort of movement underneath it or any sort of compression for what you're trying to do. So I like tools in that respect to have, once again, smaller diameter toolings to get more effective work done when I'm working on it. So it has less kinetic energy needed to move the material underneath the tooling and what it's being worked. So that's my second reason. My third reason for liking short tooling is essentially space. You can have, uh, you know, it's space. You can have a ton of these little uh, tools here in a very short, small box. And I mean, you can have 100 tools in a small box. So if you're in a small shop, this can be very handy. You say, well, that may not always work when Let's say, Roy, what if you're working on something hot? That's going to be awful hot, holding your hands that close to steel. Well, you're right. You just make a pair of tongs that hold the tools for you. Therefore, your hands are away from the hot steel, and you can still use short tooling and take advantage of it. Now, that's not for everyone, but that's what I prefer. So let's move on. And the fourth reason is an economical standpoint. When you're creating long tooling, like let's say in this punch here, look how much of the tool is actually being spent on just the holding in or the part that you're going to be hitting, and look how much of the actual tool is being used on the working end. Not very much, very little, right? So, if I were to cut this off, use just this bit as the tooling, I could draw out two or three more punches out of this one piece of material. Once again, it's a personal preference thing, but these are my reasons why. So those are my kind of my four top reasons why I like the short versus long tooling. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the design of tooling. Whether it be short or whether it be long tooling, tooling is only as good as its design and its function. So. Let me get into this. So this here is a drift. As you can see, it's for a hammer eye, and it's more importantly, it's for sledgehammer eyes, and it's just made out of mild steel. Now, as you can see, it's got quite a heavy cross section. It's quite thick, and it's meant to be that way in order to take, up the, take the rigors of beating it through a sledgehammer. If you did it with a small piece of tooling like this, it would be awful weak and the thing would overheat before it even got through the piece. So it would resist it too much. So you need the added mass here. Tooling like this is meant to be used lightly. 
any tooling that does not have a taper to the working end is light use tooling. The reason for that being is anything that's straight has one mono thickness all the way across it is going to have more deflection. And so if you use this really heavily, it's going to bend. And I'll show you how that looks. Clear some of these against this one. So here's a perfect example of that. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, right here. So you can see right here, if I were to line these up, that's got quite the bow in it, don't it? If you look at the straight edge on that, and then the crookedness of this tool here, this thing is definitely bowed out. Maybe it shows a little better there. You definitely tell this tool is bowed. That's because I've been using this to take and punch quite heavily through a lot of material. And this is showing you that deflection. It's finally deflected enough that it's starting to go over and head south for the winter. So using this at the same heaviness as this, it's going to create the same result. Doesn't matter what the steel's made out of, it, the heat treat could be right, everything could be right, but eventually that deflection will take hold of a tool after a period of time, especially with heavy, heavy use. So, designing a tool properly is just as important as the length of the tool or whatever the purpose is. So, give you a different example. Say I would have made this punch, but like this, out of a much thicker cross section up here, tapering down to my working end down here. This is not going to deflect like this thin bit will here. So that's just something to think about about designing of tooling. Same thing when it comes to short tooling. Here's two separate things for two separate chasing jobs. This is a small little slit chisel. Can't really see it, but it's a small little slit chisel. And this here is just a rectangular shaped punch. This here is meant to just pop through with a block, use a die block with, and so therefore, it's not used quite heavily. It, but if you look at it, look at the shape here. It's almost got this hourglass or elliptical type shape to it. This is a little more pronounced where I actually forged the back end. What this does is that with this elliptical shape here, it resists that bending even more, just like an arch would resist anything that would be trying to flatten out an arch. So that is just part of this design tooling. This also aids in centering your blow straight through the piece. As the th center thickness is just there to hold on to, but this lines up directly in line with the cutting edge and allows every blow to put the max effect on the edge. Same thing with this piece. It's got that elliptical shape to it. And then you could even do it with this drift. I didn't do it with this drift, but this here shows you a grind, this grind line. That's kind of the ideal elliptical shape for a drift. You want the part that's going to drift out to somewhere in here and then it to taper off. So this way you can hammer it straight through the hole once you've drifted it to size. So anyways, that's it about tooling today. If you guys have any more questions about that, let me know in the comment section below. This is just simply why I prefer short tooling over long tooling. I have both in my shop, and I use them for different purposes. You know, this is a lot nice to hold, hold in the hand for hot punching work versus making a small one out of a little tiny coil spring to do the same deal. I just happen to have this one, so that's what I use. Um, use what you got, but if you're going to make some tooling, maybe give some short tooling a try and uh, see if you like it any better than the big, long, and thick stuff. So, anyways, that's it for today. Thank you all for watching this video, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.